So that's the Supreme Court Chief Justice Richard Wagner on security. It's interesting, right? Has the uh, so-called Freedom Convoy, that's what they called it, or the trucker protest, changed security needs for the Supreme Court in Ottawa? Well, it's something I want to find out from our, our next guest, who actually Mr. Wagner, Chief Justice Wagner, replaced. She knows a thing or two, or more, about the court. She's now weighing in on the online platform and online speech regulation. She's arguing in a new paper that the federal government needs to regulate the system, not the speech online. What does she mean by that? How do you combat hate speech online? Well, she's working with a group of citizens from across the country to give the government recommendations to protect online speech while fighting disinformation and hate. It's a question, obviously, that's plaguing the federal government's uh, Bill C-10. Do you remember that? Critics were slamming that bill, saying it could restrict content creators and be muzzling and censorship. That controversial bill has been revived as the Online Streaming Act. That's coming up. Debate about that. But critics still say this bill could over-regulate user-generated content, platforms like YouTube and TikTok. Can there be a happy balance between online regulation and protecting online speech? And this area of new security at the Supreme Court do judges need more protection? Let's find out. Joining me now, the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada, Beverly McLaughlin. She also co-chairs the Canadian Commission on Democratic Expression. First of all, what a pleasure to have you on the program, and you're taking a break from writing your incredible spy novels, actually, which are pretty cool, at least detective fiction. Um, you're part of this group of Canadians from across the country who are trying to create a list of recommendations for the federal government to protect democratic expression online and address harmful content like disinformation and hate speech. This is very prescient. You know the federal government's under heavy fire today in Parliament on something called Bill C-11, right, uh, which uh, some say is restricting content. And, and, and is there a way to regulate uh, social media and still protect freedom? What's the balance? Well, you've hit the right word when you say balance. And long before we were in the digital age, um, our law said and continues to say that, one, you have freedom of speech. That's guaranteed by the Charter. But you cannot use that way in uh, that speech, that freedom, in a way that's going to seriously harm others. And, uh, and that is where the balance comes in. And the courts have struck this balance for many decades uh, with different legislation, hate legislation, other kinds of defamation, different kinds of, of law. And now we face a new challenge, which is how do we, how do we affect this balance in the digital age? You write uh, in, in, in part of your group that there are basically two ways to do it. One, basically to say, like Germany does it, once something's posted, oh, I saw a hate speech, go get it. And you're saying that's the wrong way. We got to get it upstream. How do you do that? Right. How do you do that? Yeah. So uh, that is the takedown model, and it sounds attractive, but it's really difficult. First of all, you you have to uh, get the get the platforms to decide in advance what they're going to take down, and, and new forms of speech are always cropping up. Or you have to, and you have to have a regulator to tackle it after it's out, get it down after it's done harm. A lot of problems with it, and it can be very intrusive on free speech because. You just know if you're sending speech around that you might get caught by this draconian um, right. uh, 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 curb that, that's just going to take you offline before you even have a chance to explain or say why you think you should be allowed to say that. So free speech critics don't like that model, and I actually think it faces huge problems in implementing it. So we gave this a lot of thought, and... We think the second way is the best, which is uh, to incentivize platforms with some sanctions at the end, if they really uh, don't comply, uh, to incentivize them to be responsible in what they allow to be spread and amplified uh, by the, by the internet uh, and the various platforms they provide. And so the idea here is uh, that uh, you attack the problem from a systemic basis. And we all know the systems are based on algorithms and they choose what to amplify, mm. et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you can uh, put uh, 
regulations and laws and incentives in place and work with the platforms as well to try to uh, ensure uh, that uh, some of the worst harms are not being amplified. Right. A couple quick issues while I have you. Uh, earlier today, as you know, Chief, the Chief Justice uh, who replaced you, uh, Richard Wagner, spoke to the media. Um, and we're just talking about trust and hate speech. He talked about protection for the Supreme Court. He hopes it's considered a fundamental building to protect following the, uh, the, the protest, the trucker uh, convoy. Um, what does that tell us that, that new security for the court I is needed? Does that, is that an important issue because of the new environment right now that even chief justices of the Supreme Court or justices on the Supreme Court are concerned? Mm -hmm. Well, he knows what's going on better than I. It's been over three years since I was there. Uh, so uh, he is the person who is in the best position to assess this. We do know that uh, First of all, let me say that historically judges and courts haven't been big targets of terrorism or people who are dissatisfied. There, and we have, for most of our courts, in, for our courts in Canada, we uh, they enjoy a pretty high mm. public confidence rating. So I don't think uh, it's it's a huge problem. Although I defer to Chief Justice Wagner on that, uh, insofar as he would have better information. But I would, I would say uh, that there are some risks that have to be monitored. We saw that uh, a stalker uh, recently uh, has been uh, uh, charged uh, in connection with uh, threatening the, the life yes. of one of the United States Supreme Court justices. And so all of the justices have security, had security when I was there. And I think we have to be vigilant about that. And yeah. it just takes one person who is upset with a decision or whatever uh, to do a terrible thing. And well, we have to go against that. Uh, and speaking of vigilance, um, the Supreme Court, you mentioned the Supreme Court in the United States. They have that leaked draft opinion to overturn the key Roe v. Wade uh -huh. abortion decision. Yeah. Um, that rock a Supreme Court. Does the Canadian court need to be vigilant against leaks like this and politicization of the court? Oh yeah. Well, we are. First of all, we're not near. We're not politicized in the way the United States Supreme Court is. Our, the justices on the Supreme Court are chosen independent of, of of their politics, and and so we don't have that atmosphere, which is which is terrific. Uh, but. Um, Yes, uh, when I was Chief Justice, I was always concerned that we not have any leaks. Sometimes the cases are very important. Sometimes they involve a lot of money and could affect stock market and so on. So we were always very, very careful, and I'm sure the court continues mm. to be very, very careful. But this was quite shocking to everybody in the judging business, if I can put it that way, because the United States Supreme Court had never had a leak either. So why it happened, we still don't know, eh? and uh, at least I don't know. And uh, uh, we we need to make sure uh, for the credibility of the court that yeah. that there aren't leaks like this. I like that expression, by the way, uh, the judging business. The former chief justice uh, on lots of different things, including regulating the system, not the speech when it comes to the regulation, probably one of the most hotly debated topics today. Thank you. What a pleasure to have you back. Lovely to talk to you, Evan.